Hi everybody, my name is Peter. Welcome to Our Worship Sound. Today I want to give you 12 tips on playing keyboard bass. And you might find yourself in different situations where either your bass player is gone for the week or uh, you're without a bass player in your band for a season of time. And sometimes in those situations, the most logical thing to do is to have the keyboard player play those bass parts uh, on a separate keyboard. So I want to show you some things I've learned through that process of uh, me being in that position. And um, some of these tips are specific to playing bass on a keyboard. Some of them are just general bass techniques. So anyway, here we go. Tip number one is understand the range of an electric bass guitar. A four string bass is gonna have a low note of E. Okay, that's right here on this keyboard. It might be in different places on your keyboard, whether it's E1 or E2. I actually have my keyboard shifted down so I don't have to play as low on the range. But anyway, this note corresponds with the low E on a four string. And the, uh, the highest string on a four string is gonna go up to here. And so you're dealing with a playing range of about an octave and a fifth, okay, up to this B. Anything higher than this, you're gonna be dealing with more of a melodic range for the instrument. And bass can be a beautiful melodic instrument as well. Um, but just be aware of what you're doing when you're playing it. If you wanna stay in a bass range, stay in this probably octave and a fifth. Um, a five string bass is gonna add a few more notes on the low end down to this low B. So if you're trying to make a natural sounding bass sound on your keyboard, make sure you understand the range and you're definitely not going to want to go lower than that low B. Tip number two is make sure you play with clean technique and just one note at a time. If I were playing on piano with my left hand, I might do two or three notes at a time. Like I would want to do that on a bass, it would sound like this. It just tends to muddy up the bottom end. Now there is a technique on bass guitar called chording, and uh, that's usually playing two notes at a time. So if you have something like this, and this would be familiar to some people in my circles, but if that's what you're after, then be intentional and go for that. Um, otherwise, make sure you're playing with clean technique, that when you go to play the next note, that the note before it is released by that time. And just be accurate with your technique there. Tip number three is watch your volume. And uh, this might be a fairly obvious tip, but bass volume is more critical than our keyboard volume, normally speaking. And that is because um, too much bass can really overwhelm a mix really quickly, whereas too little bass can make the rest of the mix sound really thin and underpowered. So make sure that you and or your mix engineer are really on top of making sure that the bass is at the optimum volume at all given times and all given dynamic levels um, with the rest of your band. Number four is don't play all the time. And um, because whether or not the bass is playing at a given time has um, a huge effect on the dynamic level of the song. I'm gonna start out this song uh, with no bass and you can hear the effect that the bass has when, it, when it's brought in, so. Let me add the loop to it. So you can hear that adding the bass definitely steps the song up another dynamic level. So if you're having a song that you want to build, make sure you don't bring in the bass too early. Um, tip number five is um, kind of a little bit the opposite of that, and that is don't come in too late. And that is to say that when the drums are playing a full groove, when the drums are fully in, generally speaking, you want to have the bass in as well. And that's kind of a general rule that when the drums are playing, the bass should be playing as well. Now, all musical rules are meant to be broken, um, but and there's certain times for having everybody else in but the bass, and then the bass comes back in later where you want the, the mix to sound um, maybe a little bit thin, so it sounds extra full when the bass comes back in, then that's cool. Um, but just make sure, as a general rule, that when the drums are playing, the bass should be in as well. All right, I have some more stylistic tips to give you. Number six is um, space will give funk. Okay, so if you want uh, a more mellow or more chilled uh, feel for your song, play long and sustained connected notes on the bass. But if you want something to have a little bit more rhythmic punch or funk to it, put space in between your notes. Here's an example. Um, I'm going to play it first of all. Uh, with no space in between the notes so you get a more mellow feel and then I'm going to put um, space into it after a second. So just very laid back right now.
then you get the feel for how much, you know, putting extra space in there definitely lends to a funkier quality. Um, I want to like, direct you to a different video. Um, and this is a, a guy named Neil Evans with a band called Soul Live. And if you check out this video in um, the link I have annotated here on, on the video, um, you'll see him playing. Um, and at a certain point, it's about 55 seconds into the video, he starts putting more space in between the notes. And it just gives a different quality to the, to the groove at that point. And uh, if you go to 6 minutes and 56 seconds into the video, you're going to see where he starts his solo. And it's, it's pretty cool. It's well worth your time. So definitely check that out. Tip number seven is alternate your fingers on repeated notes. You might find uh, you're playing a rock groove or something like that where you want to play repeated notes on a bass. Um, instead of doing it with one finger, you get kind of a choppy feel to it. Alternate fingers so you can make it more continuous. Here's an example. One, two, So uh, that's tip number seven. Tip number eight uh, has to do with slapping. We'll call it to slap or not to slap. And uh, if you have anyone who's ever watched an episode of Seinfeld is familiar with the sound of slap bass, where uh, the bass player will take the bony part of his thumb and slap it against the string to get a different sound. And incidentally, the parts on Seinfeld, from what I've read, were actually played on a keyboard bass, so uh, represent. Um, but uh, the way my keyboard is sound is set up, it can have a slap sample with it. And if I play um, notes up to a certain dynamic level or velocity, um, it'll just sound like I'm gently plucking a bass. But if I go above a certain level, you get that slap sample in there. Up on these upper register notes, um, there's actually a third layer where you can get the plucking sound and then a little bit louder slapping sound if you go full dynamic it'll go which is a plucking sound to it so so check out some of the different uh, slap sounds that are available to you at, at, on different keyboard bass patches tip number nine has to do with other bass sounds and there are a lot of different sounds that electric bass guitar can make um, one is uh, one of my favorites is the slide where the player will start high on the neck with his left hand, play a note, and then shift it down. It'll sound like this. Okay, there's another variation on this one where he starts low, goes up, and then back down. Okay. And then uh, there's some other kind of muted sounds that um, you might find on, on your bass sample. Okay. I use this uh, kind of muted plucking sound sometimes. I need to practice with it a little bit, but anyway. Um, so there's some other electric bass samples that you can work in with what you do. Harmonics would be another sound that a bass kid make where you, uh, a player would lightly touch a, a string and then play it so you only get the upper harmonics of that sound. Um, that's not something I incorporate into my playing. I, I think it tends to be best, best left to a, a real live electric guitar, electric bass guitar player. So, uh, But if you want to try to put that into what you do, then go for it. Tip number 10 is kind of a counter to tip number 9 and all the other different bass guitar samples. But tip number 10 is don't limit yourself to electric guitar bass sounds. You don't have to mimic an electric bass sound. Um, because especially as music tends to shift back toward uh, more of an electronic focus, there are a lot of synthesized bass sounds that we can take advantage of. And if we play to our strengths, then we can use those. Um, here's an example of a synthesized bass sound. I'm going to use that bass line again in a moment. Um, but you might find these sounds under synth bass, in the synth bass category. You also might find them in the synth lead category with sounds that you'd normally use to play melodically up in the upper register of the instrument. They also work to, to provide a good bass foundation too, so um, you can check those out and use some of those sounds. Tip number 11 is take advantage of the opportunity to play super tight keyboard parts with your bass parts. What would normally take a lot of time to work out between a bass player and a keyboard player can uh, happen a lot more conveniently when it's just one person thinking with one brain to put these things together. So here's an example of uh, a bass part and a keyboard part that are really well synced um, melodically.
So, and then here's an example of, I'm gonna turn this down, get my regular bass sound back. Here's an example of two parts that work together rhythmically. So those, those rhythms would take a long, long time to work out with two different people, but it comes fairly easily with just one person playing them both. The twelfth and final tip has to do with simplifying what you do on your regular keyboard parts. And I think it's important to acknowledge that when we add a different element in playing keyboard bass, we're not going to be able to realistically do as much on our keyboard as we normally would. One of the ways I have to simplify has to do with working with layers. And a lot of times I will have multiple layers on my keyboard that I will mix as I go during the song based on the dynamic of the song. And you can't see it, but I have a, a MIDI controller here with different knobs that control different patches or different sounds and the levels of them. And while I would normally be turning knobs to adjust the volume, what I do when I'm playing keyboard bass is I set up different mix levels as presets. And so all I have to do is hit a button and add or subtract um, different levels of the new layers. So here's an example of that. Um, so I'm going to start off with just piano and a little bit of delay on it. Now with my left hand, I'm going to go to a different patch and add some different sounds in there. So is where my left hand would normally be making those adjustments on knobs. Since it's occupied up here, I can just hit a button and move to the next uh, level of patch. So anyway, those are 12 keyboard bass tips. I hope that's been helpful to you. I hope that inspires you to maybe get out a second keyboard and try some new things. Um, in the meantime, would you please sign up for the email list at ourworshipsound.com slash contact. And that way it can help to keep you up to date on what's coming next from Our Worship Sound. Also, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow on Facebook, Twitter, and all that good stuff. We'll be in touch soon. Thank you for joining me today.